So this is the third video in my 100 PlayStation 2 collection. Uh, before we move on, I just want to backtrack just to two games quick. The first one's Lifeline. I got so involved talking with it that I forgot to show the inside. So you have the disc, instruction manual, and on the back you have uh, Side Girls, which I am going to talk to, which I'm going to talk about next. Sci Girls, I didn't really talk about the game. I kind of just was talking about how much about the doll line. Uh, the game is not a doll game. It's an action game that's based off the storyline of a doll line in Japan by whatever, Takara, Takara, or whatever. Um, and in that, you have two characters, Asuka and Ice. Asuka is a ninja, so she goes off and cuts people up, and that's a really action game. And then you have Ice, which she does guns, and they have like two different, I think they have two different storylines, but it's an action game, and it's kind of, it's just, um, maybe with Metal Gear Solid, not really, I think it just has the action parts from it, but that's what that is. So it's not a doll game, it's just based off it, but it's an action game. And I think it's really cheap, and even though I didn't care much for it, I think it's still worth a shot. The next game I'm going to show uh, is my favorite game series ever, and that is uh, Xenosaga. I first got this, uh, I first tried it out, uh, I saw it online, and just her eyes. This is another f image, and then I saw episode one, and I thought, oh, that must be like Star Wars. And I was at a Christmas party at a friend's house once, and a couple years uh, back in like '04, and I saw that sh uh, they had it, so I got to borrow it. And I didn't actually really give it a, a chance. There was just certain things of it. It wasn't what I thought it was. And so I didn't give it a chance. Uh, then I met someone who really liked it. And they convinced me to give it another go. And I did. And I'm really glad I did because I was able to, you know, play a little bit further into it. And I really, really liked it. I love the story. I love the cutscenes. I'm, I'm actually a huge fan of really, really, really long cutscenes. And this game rivals Metal Gear Solid cutscenes. And I also just love the story, the characters, and everything about it. I would definitely give it a try. Uh, when I got it, I got it at Target in October or so of 2003. Or four. 2004. I'm going to say 2000. Wait. Yes, 2004, because Xenosaga uh, 2 came out in 2000, in February of 05. Okay. Yeah, October 2004. And I, at Target, they had this, and they had a Greatest Hits version. So I got to choose, and I thought that was really cool, because I, I don't like the Greatest Hits logo. Also, what's really cool about this game is that it is on a dual layered DVD instead of a single layered. Not that many PlayStation 2 games uh, had that. So that was pretty cool. The next game is, I got it uh, for Christmas, and it is Yu-Gi-Oh! Capsule Monster Colosseum. Another Yu-Gi-Oh! game. Uh, this came out, and I was kind of interested in it, just because uh, I was more interested into the anime. I gave up on the card games. Uh, here are the cards right here. And they're not in here. I have no clue where they went. But I do like the disc cover. This is pretty cool. And you got the other thing that shows off Duelist of the Rose. Um, I don't know why they're advertising this. Because if I got I got this in 2000. This was my first PlayStation 2 game. And this came out, like, I don't know how many years after it. It's like advertising an old game. <laughs> anyway, so... This is cool. It's kind of based off the Capsule series, which never made it into the Yu-Gi-Oh! anime series. Um, it, it did in the Season Zero, but 
And this is actually pretty cool. They have this one stage, and I love the music for it. But I never really got that far in it. Go figure. But it's it's okay. I mean, it's not the card game. It's another game. Another thing. Same label as the original one. The next game that I got, um, Christmas present. This is the last game I got in 2004. I got it for my aunt, and there's actually a really interesting uh, mix-up story behind it, and that is Inuyasha, the secret of the cursed mask. So, what happened was, is I did not get back with my aunt at the time on, like, a Christmas list that year. So, I called her up, like, at the end of Christmas, the last, um, near the night of Christmas Day, and I told her what I wanted, which was, I, um, asked for Oni Musha, and because it was after Christmas, she was kind of tired, and <laughs> she, I, I don't think she really remembered, but she remembered the Sha part, so Oni Musha, Inu Yasha, um, yeah, <laughs> anyways, so, you know, I, I'm not into Inuyasha at all. I, I've seen the anime a few times. I think I read the first manga book in high school. But I did like the graphics. Um, I kind of like those little chibi, super deformed graphics. And I thought, you know, hell, I'll give it a shot. And, oh, look, I actually kept the card. <laughs> the um, limited edition Inuyasha trading card. I wonder if this is actually worth anything, but... And there's just an Inuyasha advertisement on the back. I'm not... Okay, so I kind of played it, and you get the choice between playing as this girl or this guy. It's like a boy-girl thing, but whoever the hell dubbed it did a really nasty job. Because when they dubbed it, they... A lot of it at the time would be... Like, if you were playing as her, they would be calling her a he, and sometimes he a she. So, not the best, um, trying to fit two stories in one. On top of all that, it's the same exact story. There isn't really any difference. So, I don't know. I like the graphics, though. So, not into Inuyasha, but I, I think my, my one friend has a Japanese PlayStation RPG, which is in 2D. And then there's, I think, a DS one. And I think this is probably a lot better than the DS one. Um, maybe it's the best, uh, RPG for Inuyasha. Uh, who knows, but... Now we're going into 2005, and my first game of the year, which I got in... I'm gonna say February, because I got this when I got a birthday gift for a friend. It is Dead or Alive 2 Hardcore. Story behind this. Um, in 2000, in about August or so of... Well, not August... Like, October. I'm going to say October. Yeah, September, October of the previous year, 2004, I got a Dreamcast. And I was, like, looking around for games to get on the Dreamcast, and I saw it at Alive 2. The cover for the Ellie edition was really cool, I thought. And DOA is just one of those games that... I think if you don't really know this series at all, you're really interested in because of, of course, the uh, perky bosoms and whatnot. And there's just all these rumors about it. I know I've heard from so many people um, who say that, oh yeah, you know, you can adjust. I know in the Saturn version you could adjust the bounce, but I don't believe you could do that again in any other game in like 2, 3, 4. So, I, you know, I, I, I looked into DOA, and I had an Xbox at the time, but I really wasn't looking to do anything with it. I won it from a Mountain Dew. Uh, I don't think if anyone remembers, uh, during the summer or so, there was, like, a Mountain Dew promotional thing going on where if you collected X amount of battle caps, you could get stuff. And my brother, my two brothers and I did it for the Xbox, and we got it. Never really, I, I got the DOA games on it, that was pretty much it. But, I saw this and I thought, you know, I think this would be a good place to start, because it was under $10, and I thought, you know, this would be a really good place to start with the series. 
So that's that. And I actually really liked it. This is kind of what brought me back into uh, 3D Fighters. I tried Tekken once and I just couldn't. Tekken 4 was what I tried and I wasn't that big of a fan of it. So I kind of just like left low, let it load, but DOA 2 brought me back into it and I really got into the 3D Fighter scene for a bit. I, I wasn't really any good at it, but I just, I, I liked it. So this is definitely, I think, my favorite uh, 3D Fighter on the PlayStation 2. Next game, which I got February, is Xeno Saga Episode 2, and of course I pre-ordered it for the art book. No, the DVD. You got a DVD with all the cutscenes from Xeno Saga 1, which really made me happy. Unfortunately, though, this came in two discs instead of one dual layered. Which kind of disappointed me. I thought that was pretty cool. But I think they did it probably to cut costs. I don't know how much that has. But you do have an advertisement for Tekken 5. Because Tekken 5 came out shortly after Xenosaga 2 did. Uh, you know, they radically redid the art for it. In the battle system. Which really didn't go over well with a lot of people. I can't say I blame them. But the story was really good. And that's why I liked it. But this is my least favorite out of the three. Uh, my least favorite. Next game is Shining Tears. Got this for Easter. Uh, by Sega. It was um, the first console release of a Shining game in many, many years. The last one was probably the premium disc for Shining Force 3 that came out in Japan only in addition to the other two scenarios for Shining Force 3. The rest of the stuff that came out was on like the GBA uh, Shining Soul which is uh, kind of essentially what the Shining Tears is, is a Shining Soul thing. Not in 3D but the artwork for it, if I can kind of... is... I really liked it. It's a 2D. It was pretty cool because you could work with two people multiplayer and so you got to do missions and stuff, and I think you can even do the whole story in two-player. So, co-op. Everybody loves co-op these days, so this was doing it. It was an online co-op, but you gotta do what you want. Really interesting thing about this, though, is supposedly Sega did not... Uh, Sega of America, when they were dubbing this and translating it over... They did not actually, they cut out a whole bunch of voice work. Supposedly there was like a bunch of voice acting in it, and they cut it out. So that's pretty sad, I thought, because I do like voice work, and they're, it's pretty text heavy. So I'm going to stop this video now because my battery light is blinking at me because it's dying. So I got to go charge the battery. So um, catch you later.